We are here because we are dedicated to helping the entire CrossFit community. Determined to elevate coaches, box owners, athletes, and everything in between, we believe that this mission will begin right here, right now. While this time and this goal begins with you, our hope is that you take this fire ignited within you and weave it into your own life with the same unrelenting passion to give those you have the privilege of coming in contact with the best hour of their day. Welcome back to another episode of Best Hour of Their Day. I'm your host, Jason Ackerman. Actually, I'm not your what only am, host. Oh, well, yeah, what am I? You're the guy, the guy that just pops on. You're right. I am the guy. Thank you for that. The guy. We are your hosts. We are your hosts, Ackerman and Fern. Today, sorry, I took a sip of my water. I thought you were going to talk. I mean, you were talking about, you were messing up the intro, so why would I, why would I interrupt you? <laughs> this is, uh, we, don't, we don't reshoot. We are a one and done, much like the open here on the podcast. But today, we're talking about another topic that we put up on the social media on our Instagram at best hour of their day. I said something to the extent of not all members need or want intensity. Uh, once again, people lost their mind. Oh, they really lost their mind about when I said you should be embarrassed of the coach you were a year ago. People freaked out. Did they? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Oh yeah. That one. I was shaming people. Um, yeah. That is, that is, uh, that is a scarcity mindset of people projecting their own, uh, in their own insecurities on other people. Like that, by the way, that quote, um, originally comes from Joe DeGain talking about himself when he and I were having a discussion about being an affiliate owners, which then I repurposed as a coach talking about myself. Well, you said that about yourself and then I put it out there very generally, you should be embarrassed of the coach you were a year ago, not I. I think we have, at the point that people are listening to this podcast, your quote will have also uh, been on social media where you're speaking right. you know, firsthand, which I think is okay to say, but man, people were not happy. They think so I was shaming this, again, them. Again, well, so this is, a, this is a, again, misinterpretation of what it is that we are doing, which is anybody who follows what we do it should understand that like, this is not about shaming people. Like we literally teach people every single weekend, every day in the affiliate with affiliate you at seminars. It's all we do. It's literally the only thing that consumes our lives. And if somebody read that and didn't understand that what we were talking about is that the pursuit of being better should lead you to the point where you are embarrassed about where you were one year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago is not paying attention. Right. And by the way, and there is nothing wrong with being embarrassed of the other person you were a year ago. Like what, what is, what is wrong with that? That means that you are better. Like I just fundamentally don't understand why that's a problem. Well, that's what I was going to say. I just didn't realize embarrassed was such a strong word. Hey, listen, it's like, it's like the level two, you might not want the feedback, but that doesn't mean it's inaccurate. Yeah, people were like, oh, I wish you would say it as like, I'm proud of who I've become or I'm this or that. I'm like, stop, man. Everyone is very... Stop. Like, why, why does it happen? Why, why do I have to be... Why are we beating around the bush with regard to how you... The words that we use and how you feel about that verbiage versus, versus what is the message? Are you pursuing development or not? And listen, it, and it, if, you, if anybody thinks that we're saying this from a, uh, from a place of malice... Well, that's not a us problem. That's a you problem. You're clearly not paying. You're clearly not paying attention. Like I, I don't know how to make you feel better about that, and I don't have time for it. Right? Yeah, I mean, multiple people were sending me the definitions of embarrassed, and I was like, "You're proving my point." Like, right. feeling awkward about something. I'm like, "Yeah, you should." Like, I, I, I'm embarrassed of who I was, and a lot of it is. You know, you, you didn't put the time or effort in and now you are. So you should be embarrassed of that. It's, it's again, I'm going back to like, it's not a bad thing. Embarrassment is not bad. It's not. I don't, I get embarrassed all the time and it's never a bad thing because I understand the value of it, which is like, I've, I've been, something has been brought to light, which I can now rectify. Like, you know, it's way worse than embarrassment. 
ignorance. Yeah, that's a great point. You want to float around in ignorance for the rest of your life? Like I would take embarrassment every day of the week over that. Well, I think you nailed that one. Nail this one. What's your take on what Jillian Michaels posted again <laughs> about CrossFit? Uh, what, it, I don't think we should waste time talking about stupid people. Fair enough. I mean, anybody who's anybody who like could get through more than 30 seconds of that hot diarrhea that she was spewing is just, just wants to bludgeon themselves with stupidity. Are we just as guilty as the people coming at us about being embarrassed if we do the same to her? Like is all these podcasts, the cross the world that came back and argued against it. Is it just the same thing? Like, cool. That's your opinion. It happens to be dumb and wrong, but we don't need to sit here and spend an hour talking about it. No, it's like, it's kind of odd. Everybody knows she's wrong. The only reason she that she's irrelevant, right? Which again, like I, I don't know Jillian Michaels. I have no reason to dislike her, but as a famous person, the only reason that you're going to get on social media and do a nine minute diatribe about your feelings about CrossFit clearly having never ever done any research with regard to CrossFit is could only be to drum up social media and relevance like I, I just don't understand what other purpose there would be of that for that right she's doing it to get that you know the clicks but no different than some of our posts right we we could very easily have changed you should be embarrassed of the coach you were a year ago to you should be proud of the coach you've become. And people would probably like it. And then we wouldn't have gotten a billion comments on it. And it's, it's kind of the same well, thing. I think we live in a world where you want to grab that attention. People are scrolling on their phones and you need to grab attention. Well, not really. The, the difference is that's what was said. Like, that's what we said. Like, and, and, and we didn't say it to turn it into an Instagram post. Like that was the, that was the verbiage used in the conversation. Right. Right. So I'm not going to recreate it in a different light so that it's more, I don't know, feel good for Instagram. Like that was the verbiage. Like that, that is, that is the fundamentally the, the difference I think in my mind, which is like, that was what was said. And quite frankly, I think it has far more impact if you say it that way right like i feel i i feel i feel like it has far more impact on me as a person because that's and that's my opinion right so, and i'm allowed to have that but like rather than be like i'm so proud of the person i've become like i'm just not into that type of i'm just like i'd rather be embarrassed of the person that i was five years ago which i am 100 well i think we both agree in general the world has gotten a little soft like where you can't yeah. just say that type of stuff. I mean, I didn't, last... I didn't realize people got so uh, up, up in arms about that. Like, yeah, uh, I mean, I've gotten better at just kind of like seeing the comments, but then a couple of people were DMing me about it. And I was just like, all right. Yeah, if you're... So it, it, it goes back to the point. It, it, it's like, this is kind of the same argument I have with people that are just like, if I have it, when we have this discussion already about like, you know, a spelling error in my email that I send to the, to the members and people are like, you know, you got a spelling error. And I'm like, did you get the point? Right. Did, did we, did we just jump right past the message and go to the, this quite frankly, irrelevant nuance with regard to this thing? Like, did you get the point? What is the message? Interpret it however you want. The point is, did you get the message? I like it. You know, let, let, let's not beat this because, again, we're going to move forward. We're going to talk about um, intensity. But did you see the kettlebell swings that she was doing? It was hot garbage. I mean. Oh, now, I might be saying this out of ignorance because no. I have not. I mean, I've done I've done a little bit of uh, kind of like, you know, I'm no Keith Wittenstein by, by you know. Coach Panda, by the way, Coach Panda got his black belt in jujitsu this past week. If I, you're listening, I Keith, saw that. Congrats. congrats, congrats, bro. Um, you know, like he's he's a kettlebell nerd, which I totally respect about Keith. But I'm pretty sure that's not a thing. 
<laughs> yeah, what she was doing is dead. I've done the RKC <laughs> back in the day, learned from Pavel. We did not learn the, you know, bent over, rounded back, you know, kettlebell swing or whatever you're going to call that thing. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, uh, to make Wads great again, uh, Instagram handle, thank you for what you've been doing the past week with regard to those posts. And in fairness, that's the only place I've gotten the news on this Jillian Michaels topic. Oh, God. It is fantastic. Like, it just... I, I did see many... It's other... comic relief. That's the way I look at it. It's just pure comedy to me. It's like, it's like watching stand-up comedy where I'm just laughing. and Like, you literally have no idea what you're talking about. But, you know, and, and like I've said, a lot of cross a podcast dedicated a full episode to that. I, I like what you said. We're not spending an hour dealing with ignorant or dumb people. Um, it's just well, it's also we're, we're preaching to the choir. Like everybody agrees. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what, what's the purpose of the topic? We're like CrossFit's good. And you're like, we're gonna do a whole episode on CrossFit is good. And we could just stop right there. <laughs> so, so let's talk about the real topic at hand. I, I put another post out. Like I said uh, previously, if you guys are listening, go on our Instagram, you can scroll back and see it and see many of the comments. Uh, not all of your members need or want intensity. And a lot of people were giving you know, the, the hallelujah emoji. And I had people reach out like, it's great to see a coach with such a, such a background and, and time in, in this world saying this. But then there are also people that just lost it. Like, this is dumb. Yeah, I was, I, CrossFit yeah. is constantly varied functional movements. And I, most of the people that tried to use the CrossFit definition did not actually give it to us correctly. <laughs> But that's beyond the point. <laughs> the, so, I, again, I know I say this all the time. Context. <laughs> when we say your members don't want and need intensity, that doesn't mean all the time. What we're saying is that you can't just take intensity. This probably is an absolute thing. You cannot just take intensity and dial it up to 100% every day all the time like it's not appropriate and anybody who's been an affiliate for any any uh significant amount of time let's call it more than one year can probably identify a person or a scenario in which the person that comes in the door does not need nor do they want intensity that all they're looking for on that day for any number of reasons is an outlet you know and, and, that's and it. That's and, and that was the point I was also like, you know, we say need. I, I think you can make the argument everyone needs intensity. If, if, For sure. Not, if you want results. Right. Right. And, and often when we're speaking about results, it's work capacity across broad time and modal domains. Some people's results are mental. Some people's results right. are emotional, stress, et cetera. So, yes, A, not everybody needs it, but certainly not every day. But more so, not everybody wants it. And I think the people that are arguing with us are the people stuck in 2007, 2010, like we spoke about last week, where it's like, you're so like, this is CrossFit. And if you don't want to work hard or you don't want to, you know, ratchet it up and find that pain cave, don't do it. Like, what's worse, telling these people don't do CrossFit, which then gets them to do nothing or saying, hey, cool. You don't want to go 225 today? Do 115. Do 95. Just move. I mean, we could throw any number of scenarios out there. Does a 22-week pregnant female need intensity? No. And I can say that with 100% confidence. No, she does not. Right. I mean, and and those are the the standards, right? But but again, like that's, but that's the point, right? Is that you, the the conversation we had should be taken with context of the athlete. There's some people that come in there, dial them up, turn them up to a hundred. There's other people that come in there based on what they've got going on. No, they do not need or want it. There's plenty of days. Most more often than not. Now I don't want intensity. Do I need it for sure? If I want to get results, but there's plenty of days when I don't absolutely don't want it at all. And then what happens? This is a great example. You got a member of your box, Joe. He doesn't want to, you know, you know Joe, and he's the guy that likes to go lighter and doesn't really push himself. But what happens? All right, Joe, we're doing, a, you know, front squats at 135 in the Metcon, and Joe's like, oh, I want to do back squats at 75. Cool. And then what happens? Halfway through the workout, Joe's working harder. Joe's pushing himself. But if you're battling him and telling him, no, you need to do this and you need to do that, you get nothing. 
where just just encouraging him to move gets him eventually doing more. I mean, how many times if you're listening, have you just not wanted to work out? And then as soon as you start, maybe round two out of five, you're like, okay, I'm feeling a little better. And then round three feels even better. And by the time you're done, you have ratcheted up that intensity. But my, my point is, you, you know, we've talked about it. Like you need to have that empathy. Coaching is not about you. It's about them. And if you're driving those members away because you're like, all you care about is intensity, you, you're going to wind up having 12 members that really like intensity, but the other 88 are at the gyms that are having more fun and more aware of, of what they actually want. And, and, and to be a little bit more practical and to exercise a little bit empathy, I do think there is an evolution with the understanding of intensity and understanding of your role and your value as an actual coach. And I, I, I use the term coach differently than I would use the term somebody who teaches people the squat. And by that, I mean that as a coach and somebody whose job is to guide them through this journey, right? That's what we're doing when somebody walks into my gym for days, months, years on end to guide them through that process and understand that they might be dealing with depression or they had a breakup or they're going through divorce or they're, you know, whatever, name the scenario that we've all probably have. It is my job to understand that sometimes I need to walk up to that person when I can both physically see and kind of in getting a vibe that they're really struggling that day, that my job at that point is to walk up and just pull a Chuck Carswell and kind of do a drive by and just say, Hey, just move today. Like, don't worry about the intensity. Like that's my job as a coach. That's recognition that while yes, intensity is required to drive results. That is not what that person needs today. Yeah. And, and, and two follow-ups to that would be intensity is what is needed to drive results. But like I said earlier, if you're pushing it so hard that you frustrate people or they don't want to do CrossFit anymore, what results are you then going to get? You know, moderate intensity is better than no intensity. And, well, and I think we've talked about this too. Like the, just it lacks understanding about what high means. Yeah. People misconstrue high intensity with max effort. And if you try to get your right. athletes or members to go max effort five days a week, you're going to burn them out. You're going to, you know, crush their adrenal you know, glands. You're going to, you're, you're going to just stress them out. You're going to hurt them. It's, it's, you know, and, let, and let's talk about this statement that we make at the level ones. Intensity is relative. And I think people forget like relative is different for every individual on every day. For example, TMI. I've had crazy diarrhea the last couple of days. That is TMI. Is that TMI? 100%. So, yeah. But, but my body's a little dehydrated. Like, I'm not feeling... I mean, it's not... It's TMI, it's not, it's not shocking. I mean, genetically, you're just an inferior human being. <laughs> Ross thinks I have IBS. <laughs> but, you know, went into the box today, and we, hit, we, we were supposed to hit a five rep max front squat. I hit four, and I was like, okay, if I go for number five, I'm going to shit myself. And I don't want that to happen in class. And, you know, and, and, and we've created a different scenario of intensity where now it's intense for everybody. Like the whole thing. Is <laughs> yeah. We're about to really ratchet up the intensity, but I was like, you know, this is not my day to push it. We did the Metcon after. And I was like, I'm going to go easy. It was relative. I come back tomorrow. Maybe I'm ready to go hundred percent again. But for me, it was more physical. Some people, man, they have a tough day at work. You know, they, they get in here. We're all dealing with like, you know, crazy year, like maybe it's just like, Hey man, I'm just here to move. Well, it's also, and this is kind of, this is so for, you know, when we do heavy days at, at my facility at CrossFit Rice, we never use percentages, right? Cause a, there's a lot of reasons, but I won't dive into that. And it's not that percentages have no value. They definitely have value. I write program for people that have percentages. The point is when we say it's heavy, what I'll tell everybody be like, Hey guys, it's a heavy day. Heavy is relative for you for this movement for how you feel today. And what's, and what's intense for me on Monday might be totally different than what's intense for me on Thursday. And that should be taken into account. So not only is it different person to person, it's different day to day. Yeah. You know, what's, what's intense for somebody who's been in the gym five consecutive days is different than what was intense Friday to Monday. 
like that's a different level of intensity they can bring. And that's the point. It's relative. And, you know, I think we've posted something in the past and people are like, no, you know, Matt Frazier's intensity is higher than everybody else's. Yes. Mathematically. Yes. Yes. 1000%. 1000%. But relatively speaking, you might have a 70 year old woman in your box that relatively her intensity is higher. Matt Frazier throwing down a five minute Fran mathematically is probably more intense than most people at your box, right? Force sure. distance time. But relatively to him, that's like a three out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. It's not high. Right. So, so the, the, the kind of, because most people who are listening to this probably have this. So think about your first time doing CrossFit. You, when you were exposed to intensity, when they were just like, this is for time go. Right. And then, you had all these crazy emotions where like mentally you were defeated physiologically. You're like, is my body going to explode? Am I going to shit my pants? Like what's happening? I have all of these feelings. And then fast forward, however many years, like whatever, while you might get the nervous pee before a workout, the, your adaptation mentally, psychologically has, has happened already. Like, I'm capable of dealing with intensity on a whole nother level than I was prior to having been exposed to it. Well, right. and so my favorite quote, and we had Greg Amundsen on a couple of weeks ago and he mentioned it, the greatest adaptation to CrossFit happens between the years. And if you're listening, think about what Fern is saying. That is exactly why when you see Fran or you see fight gone bad, or, you know, Murph is coming that you get nervous because you understand what that is will and should feel like when you have a new workout that your coach programmed or whatever you're following just threw up a random you know five rounder for time you're like okay i can see what this is going to feel like but i'm not quite as nervous as knowing i need to be sub three on this fran today well so we'll just stick with frank because it's, it's a it's an easy one what is the what is the value right of me going full send right pushing the thruster and pulling a thruster, putting my barbell directly underneath the pull-up bar so that I can get up on there and tearing my hands to do a 230 Fran versus a three. They both absolutely fall in the high box. Are you intensity. legitimately claiming you could do a 230 Fran right now on this podcast? If you, if you challenge me, I will do it. <laughs> For the listeners, please challenge Fern. Post it on your, on your Instagram, oh, hashtag I gotta do it. Fern does Fran. And it will. So, I mean, I'll tell you this. I did it not too long ago and I did it and I took a break because I miscounted and I did a 306, you know, and that was like me not, not going for right, the sandwich. We've yeah. talked about that on a recent episode too. It's like, if I knew I was doing Fran, the way I would get started would be, hey, Jace, I would talk to myself. I would take my nervous pee. I still take a nervous pee before every workout, like you mentioned. While I was peeing, I would be like, okay, just do three minutes. Just go three minutes. Like, you don't have to hurt today. And then somewhere in those 15s, I'd probably step on it. But the point is, you got to trick yourself into that. But you're right. My best ever is 246. The 14 second difference is all the difference in the world with how messed up I am for the next three days. Right. It, with minimal return. It, if, if not almost maybe negative, right? Like, right. Because right. now the so, next two days of workouts are sacrificed. I can't, I can't, I can't train. So could I do it? Like, yeah. I mean, would it hurt? And would I probably vomit for sure? But am I pretty confident in my ability to step out there and do that? Yeah. Do, am I psychologically prepared to deal with that? No, because I don't do it at that level very frequently anymore. Four or five years ago, every day, all day, I was just like, yeah, I'm totally cool with kind of like living here in this, in this torture zone. Um, but that goes away. But again, again, is, what is the purpose, right? Do I check the high box? And going back to think something that Pastor would have said many, many, many times, that 2.30 or the three or quite frankly, even four minutes is very likely more fitness than I will ever need in the real world. If you have a sub five minute friend, there's nothing in this world that you're going to have to attack physically that you're not going to be able to do. That, that's a, telling a, me... A, a physical altercation, probably. But even at that point, you're prepared. Even that, like I would say, if you do CrossFit, you're, you're, if a fight happened, 
90% better because what's going to happen? A, it's going to go to the ground and B, the second, the person you're dealing with is going to get tired. And not to mention in your mind, you're like, okay, I've been through this. My heart rate's up. I can heart rate's up. I got to breathe. I got to do these things, right? Like all that stuff. But more importantly, if you're like, hey, I have a five minute friend of like, so you can do 45 thrusters and 45 pull-ups. Cool. That's more than 99.9% of this world. Right. And, and I think the purpose of this whole conversation, it, it, it is worth, particularly as an affiliate owner and as a coach, it is worth having the conversation about pulling back or zooming back just a little bit and be like, what are we doing here? And we're not trying to drive people to a three minute frame. If it happens, fantastic. But that's not the purpose of all of this. It's not. It's great. And if somebody wants to do that, then I think you should push them there. However, if somebody doesn't give a shit about that, then you shouldn't do it because somebody who just wants to play with their grandkids and wants to get off diabetes medication. Yes, we need to have intensity, but it looks a whole hell of a lot different. And, and even like you said about yourself five years ago, like think about the things that have changed in your life and you're, you're probably a standard deviation, less than one standard deviation away from your peak fitness. Right. And, and what's changed? Well, you've got two kids. Well, you've got, right. we've had multiple affiliates. Well, you have another business, you know, best hour of there. All of these things, you're probably sleeping a lot less. You're traveling for seminar, all of these things, but that's why it's relative. Like confirm at his absolute peak. Like, Hey, Jess, watch the kids. I'm going to sleep for the next 12 hours. Perform better. Yeah. But that's not realistic. For sure. And, and it's also going back to what you started with is like, it's also not what I want. I don't care. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, really that's truly, you know, in summation, first of all, let's be clear. Fern said he would do Fran and he would try to get under two minutes or 30 seconds. <laughs> but secondly, that's really what this conversation and the post was all about. It's like, not all of your members care and that is okay. Is that sometimes, no, no, no. I I'm felt not like gonna, you should have left it there. You blew in it. You got to know when to just like cut it off and be like, hey, was, you said something profound. You're like, I should add something more profound to that. I could go back and edit this, but I won't. So let, let's just yeah. do it again. Okay, no. ready? Go back for a <laughs> Brad, uh, <laughs> not all of your members care, and that is okay. It was way better the first time, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, but it's okay. Listen, th- so, hey, you know what, everybody, going back to where we started, like, Jay is now embarrassed of the podcast host that he was 30 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. We're, uh, we're going out on that one. Email us, besthouroftheirday at gmail.com. If you're interested in learning more about Affiliate U, there's a link in our bio. Of course, if you're listening to this episode, you probably follow us on Instagram, but definitely throw some hashtags. Fern does Fran. Uh, put some pictures out. And hey, if you do this. That's a good hashtag too. Yeah, I came up with that. And if, right, if, if, hey, if you do a sub two, two and a half minute, Fran, we want to hear about it. Tag us. Hashtag best hour of their day and tag us. We'll share it. Anybody that gives us 100% intensity with Fran, we'll reshare you on our feed. All right. Hope you enjoyed that episode. And um, leave, leave Jillian Michaels alone. She just, you know, she needed a little attention. No big deal. Yeah. So you never miss an episode of the podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and on all major podcasting platforms at best hour of their day. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of the best hour of our day. See you next time.